<clears throat> How we doing, friends? I hope um, my voice uh, is being here a little bit better than the last videos. I uh, I do I'm I'm I do work I'm working I'm working on getting a microphone and everything so we can hear us better and you can hear me better and I can explain my work through YouTube and um, welcome welcome to Valencia's art welcome to paranormal grill welcome to Valencia's Hungar and Jeet Kune Do. But today is only art, which is Valencia's art. And uh, this is my work right here. One of them, one of the many others that I'll be, I'll be showing during this time and videos and trying to speak better in front of the camera or in front of the cell phone camera in this case and uh, and do and videos and stuff to how to explain what I'm doing better working on that so the painting that you guys see behind me it calls Las Cruces and it's dedicated well it's several things several things happens of why I'm doing this painting. The first the first one, as you can see, there's a spaceship and he's adopting his thoughts or his uh, sense, so, so his presence. And uh, you can see the light getting out of the of the spaceship and he's about to take him out or to take him with him. And it's what I'm, why Las Cruces? Well, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Well, I always find fascinating the name of Las Cruces, New Mexico. And then I saw a little cemetery by, a little cemetery by, uh, here in Albuquerque, by a house I used to rent apartment and apartment zone and it's around there. It's like a small cemetery and I saw that and then I don't know, it's kind of uh, unique in that way. Sorry about that. I have stuff behind me and I think I have to work on that too. Pretty soon I have to do that. And uh, as you can see, the guy is thinking he's, he's like this and then he's contemplating he's in a contemplation mode and pretty much for everything that's been going on during so many years we hear about aliens abductions and UFOs and and um, aliens and especially here in New Mexico like Roswell uh, and other places around the, the state um, uh, like a lot of people say then Dulce, New Mexico, is uh, the headquarter place for reptilians, and it's always fascinated. They say that even that place is way more interesting than Area 51, as far as I hear, and it's a it's very spooky place, supposedly. I've never been there. Uh, a lot of people told me there's there's nothing going on in Dulce, New Mexico. It's more like a small town, nothing special. You don't see anything that will make you uh, resemble the like, oh, there's aliens there. But hey, we don't know, who knows? And, and that's why I paint that one. It brings my attention how people really, really see interest, interest in these kind of these things, especially aliens and stuff. All that we have. I'm gonna move all these because it's driving me crazy. Sorry for the noise. I wasn't planning to do a video today, but there's a lot of stuff in there. And this area, I need to like work on that. There we go. 
little bit better. I have to. Yeah. <laughs> now we're now we're in business. And like I was saying, in New Mexico, there was a lot of stories about aliens abductions and and UFOs and the crash landing in Roswell of the spaceship, which is there, and all the like the Sandia the Sandia Hills or the Sandia Mountains here in Albuquerque. They they they, they have a lot of mystery there. They saw uh, beings like giants there. Supposedly giants lives there. I never I tried to camp. Uh, go to camping one day and it wasn't a, a very good experience. I will, I'm not too used to the altitude and when I went there I was fasting and I did get in trouble. So I almost passed away there. It was very crazy. I didn't, I mean it was very absurd the way I did it. Very dumb of me. Uh, you had to eat good when you go to high altitudes especially on the mountains but a lot of people told me uh, I mean, do it, which is good. It's a good thing to see. I mean, you you should be well fed before you go to places like that. And but it's uh, the other thing you had to ask permission for the entities who live in the mountains. It doesn't matter where you go; they have spirits there. They have guardians of those of those lands, and you had to ask for permission. You can go like intruder and go there because they will they will mess you up and that was their opinion and then and for now on I will do both I will eat good and then I will I will pray and of course I will pray for my food and I will pray for for the place I'm going and ask for permission never do it that way that so like I'm going there that it's okay it doesn't matter I have weapons with me if I black bear attacking me or or a mountain lion or a snake i'll be ready for those things uh yeah that's good it is good to be prepared but the thing was you need i, I needed a food that day and i didn't thought about it. it it was not the best experience not the best experience but i mean i will do it again i have a transportation i have a car so for sure it's going to happen it's going to happen one more time and it's gonna be good. interesting. I'm moving the. I'm moving myself. You know when you had a nervous thing to move your leg rapidly when you're waiting, and I can vibrate the floor here. I didn't know that. Well, yes, to that too. <laughs> and um, it, it's not a skills. I shouldn't be doing that because I already know and shouldn't be doing that part. So back to the painting, Las Cruces, New Mexico. I used to live next to a cemetery too, uh, which is on Yale and Cesar Chavez here in Albuquerque. They say it's haunted. Well, a lot of people say that all the cemeteries are haunted and they see, they see. Uh, um, let's put it this way. When you ask to the people who take care of the cemeteries, they ask two things. Uh, well, you ask one thing, which is, what's the most crazy thing it happens to you as a as a security guard in a cemetery and they always answer with both or, ter, or three questions what do you want to hear about the live people about the dead people or ghosts or about the crazy people who does witchcraft that's the the answers they give it to you and then you pick whatever i mean mostly everybody asks for the dead people, the, the, the ghosts, the, the paranormal encounters. And they say, I mean, crazy stories about what they have to face uh, in cemeteries. I never ask questions, but I have a friend that she did have questions for those who work in cemeteries. And she said, no, I want to hear it all. I don't just want to hear about ghosts. I want to hear about what the... Uh, life people does when they, they go there well he was saying for uh, he was saying that people like when they're i mean they go to the cemetery after hours they go to just to honor their 
they're dead to to say hi to cry to put some music i mean if they're mexicans or chinese or or asian they bring food to their dead and just because at the moment they probably they got hit for something a memory or you know they miss them and then they go to the cemetery after hours when it's closed and and they just want to be with their friends and family members who pass away uh, uh, one more time, you know, and that's the way we do things as a human beings. So the security guard has to go and tell them, hey, it's after hours. I know you guys miss uh, your friends or family member, but this is not the time for this. And, and they just take off and no big deal. The second one, which is very crazy, is people who does witchcraft. They go there and they do a lot of harm uh, or revengeful harm too. It can be revenge too. They go and they dig someone's picture. They put needles. They put like black salt. Black salt is very known in witchcraft in order to destroy the person's intentions or life or the way of living or if they, or, or if they have a property and they want to get rid of that person, they don't want that person in that property. They put black salt in their pictures or they, at, at the property. They do, oh, they use uh, what is like uh, spicy, the, the spicy chiles. They cut it in half and they put sulfur and they wrap it with a picture of the person to destroy their business or everything, everything what that person represents. That's the, I, I find very crazy how people that wishcraft to destroy other people. And I mean, I hear people who does wishcraft who doesn't destroy people, who does it just to help people. You, and But it's black magic. I mean, they say it's black magic. That's what I do. But I help them to like, for example, to uh, fix a disease or to get rid of a disease or make the people like, have money, who knows, better business uh but with the help of that kind of magic as far as i know some people say some people say well that's no black magic after all that's that's uh white magic hey i did stuff like that and i i were i weren't too into it i wasn't too into it i mean i did it it was all right I will never do it again because I don't I don't want to harm anybody, you know. I'm, it's not my my nature for saying that why am I gonna hurt hurt someone? If the person hurt me, I will probably confront it that in that moment and fix the, our difference right there. Instead of like go revengeful and do something worse. It doesn't make any sense, you know. Unless they really treat you with your with your life. But like I say, I mean, then you defend yourself right there. Don't destroy the people's life unless they want to kill you. If they want to kill you, then by all means, then defend yourself for everything you have. So the guy was saying, uh, the security guard was saying to my friend, they, they find a lot of stuff like that. And uh, or <laughs> they put an entire live chicken and uh, if if this, like I said, because that's what he found, and and other other uh, wish men that I know and wish ladies that I know, they they go to the cemeteries to do their thing. They're not to harm, but they find a lot of harm, a lot of stuff they're not supposed to be doing. They say they found these witchcraft of ladies <laughs> going to all uh, to to men, or other men, of course, uh, to their men or their boyfriends or someone that they want as their husbands, right? They, they want them, they want to get married to them, they want to control them, they want them to be theirs only. And these ladies, they put an entire live chicken and these men, they probably, I guess they probably stole the pants, the pantalones from these guys, stole them grab the chicken, put on inside those pants, tied it up and 
pork streams so the chicken doesn't escape and they stomp on the chicken until they kill them, until they kill the chicken inside those pants with the under underwears of that guy they want to capture, they want to be only for them, you know. And I find it very crazy when I hear, what, I mean, why you want to do something like that, you know. But they do, and they find out in cemeteries, because cemeteries are a lot of energy. So they want to, I guess they want that energy to work with them in order to attract that person in their life. So, and then other ones are like, like I told you, the picture with the needles, with the chiles and sulfur wrapped and black salt wrapped in, in some red bandana or 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 rope, rope, like very classical rope. Oh, everything has to be very, you know, very unique in a, in a sense in order to to make that, to make a, a deal of, the, of it. And so uh, they have that, which is crazy. It's really crazy, but never crazy as that one that I hear. However, in cemeteries, uh, that's why I did this painting, because the, the man is thinking, is contemplating what is, everything you know like everything in his life and everything what i'm saying right now because that's why i painted i mean because uh I, aliens and witchcraft is very crazy ghosts cemeteries i mean i don't know i mean you never know when you go to those places and you can find something very terrifying or very sad or probably very encouraging i mean some some uh you can see something to give you the courage to live your life better. Who knows? It's a place that cemeteries can be something else for sure. And <clears throat> the other story I hear about cemeteries and people doing witchcraft is this lady want her business be prosperous. But at the same time, I think she wanna do something to someone. I'm not sure because I've been, they told me, so that person told to my friend and my friend told me, so you know the information is not the same. It, it, go, it filters. And when it, got to, when it got to me, what he told me was, then this lady bought a goat and I think she put her wishes, her desires, what she, her dreams, what she wants in life, and the, as a necklace of, and, and the goat. And he, she put someone's picture. I think that she wanted a, a man in her life. And she put the picture of that guy and the necklace. So the guy, uh, who told my friend was doing this kind of stuff. I think he was the, he was a witch and he, uh, or a wizard, whatever you call that. <laughs> and it's just crazy to hear that story. So the lady bought the thing, bought the goat, bring it to the cemetery with a necklace where her, uh, you know, her wishes are. Uh, and and uh, the, the guy of the picture there. And she wants to, her business be prosperous and she make more money. I don't know if that happened I, I, because I never asked. I never asked for it. I was just too, too impressed by what I was hearing at the moment. I was like, that's very crazy right there. <laughs> you you need to have a certain motivation. I, I guess you. I think she was desperate finally she was like the, at her top like I gotta do this if not nothing will work and I've, I've been trying everything that's what I think that she was thinking when she when she did that well she did it she brought it brought it there called up my friend's friend and and she told the guy hey I had the goat I had the necklace ready and and the next goat, what do you want me to do now? 
do you brought your, chi do your kitchen knife, the biggest one? And she says, she said, yeah, okay, that's your magic rod, whatever you call it, your, you know, to do incantations like Harry Potter, you know, and Hocus Pocus, Abracadabra, all that stuff, right? But with a knife. And she brought the knife in some cemetery here in the U.S. It wasn't here in Albuquerque, as far as I know. Maybe it was here. I don't know. And and um, she brought the, the, the animal in a mouth, mausoleum, grabbed the goat, said the incantations that the guy was saying to her by phone, cut the throat of the goat, and I think she even drank the blood of the animal, and throw the goat inside the mausoleum, and you know a goat, they don't die easy. They are there, they fight back. So that thing was alive and moving and probably screaming, you know, them. It probably was very loud. So she threw the animal there, there with bleeding out, closed the door of the mausoleum, and the thing was bleeding the necklace that she made with her desires and the guy she likes. And just imagine the sound, imagine the sound of the, of the animal be scared or angry or both at the same time. He was like, probably was a very crazy scenery. And she did it there because, oh, you know, she did it there, but she actually, uh, besides that she was, did it, that she did it there, she had to stay there and talk and do the incantation by voice. Like probably asking for what she was looking for, for what she wants. She was like, I want that, I want this and blah, blah. And, I'm not gonna say blah 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 and this and this and this and and uh I don't know and the incantation and uh I don't know another word for saying uh the spell the spell saying the spell she probably was doing the spell and saying words then goes in that spell of the moment with a gold bleeding inside a mausoleum. Just imagine the goat. Not a good thing for that little animal. I don't know what happened after that. Actually, I doubt, I mean, I'm not gonna say I doubt that she was doing fine after that. I, I don't know what happened. Just don't know what happened. Because I asked my friend and he said, I don't know, I never hear from my friend, me, from my friend. So I don't know, maybe it did work, maybe not. And uh, yeah, so, Interesting was in cemeteries. Now we go to the paranormal part. Um, here in New Mexico or Albuquerque, I was walking with a friend once and we were around the cemetery and we were far from it to say if it was a UFO, but it was moving really different than a lot of UFOs. Most of UFOs, we see them like flying this way, right? Like doing this motion or this motion, right? Like, like right here, like the eyes or the little windows are right here. They're flat and you see, you know, and they have probably the antennas and the, the you know, the, the light when they pick something up, the cows, whatever. Classic UFOs from the 50s. And that night when me and my friend, we were, we were walking and she says, what is that? What the hell is that right there? What the heck is that right there? I don't want to say a lot about words here. I have to be careful with that. And that thing was doing this, this right here. And it stops. It's, it was like a climbing. Da, 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 boop. And it has like lights. And we're like, I don't know. But then it disappears. So da, 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 this and disappear. 
at the top of the trees far away by the cemetery. And we're like, is that a UFO? And she's like, I don't know. Is that supposed to be? Not, I don't know. But then it wasn't there. And I was like, you know what? I think it was a UFO. That is specifically cemetery in Albuquerque is haunted. I went, I went three, four times there, four times. I didn't saw a lot of witchcraft there. Didn't saw nothing like my friends was telling me for other places around, around, around the U.S. And when I saw, when I saw that, when I hear about it, it was haunted. I mean, I went there four times. I never have any, any, um, Paranormal, paranormal experience. But the last one finally got it, and I ha and that was when uh, she wasn't there. No, the first friend, which is, her name is uh, Rita, Rita Flores. I think Rina Flores, one of those names. I don't see her for a long time. This time I was with Abdel, Abdel, my friend, and I told him, "Hey, well, what do you want to do?" I was practicing jujitsu, and I told him. Hey, you know what? I want to go to the cemetery. I, I, I have this thing. I want to do this urban exploration, and I really want to do this. And he's like, well, I don't have nothing to do, and I'm drinking, so I don't care. I was like, all right. And then I called my my girlfriend at the moment, and I told her, hey, I'm going to be late for to go home. Uh, Abdel is picking me up, and she said, yeah, no, that's fine, because I'm cleaning. I don't want you to, to come right now. Let me clean. And then I let you, when I'm done, I'll I, I, I give you a call. And uh, all right, well, and then uh, we, I, I, I'm i very messy. My, If you see, you can tell, my apartment is a, is a mess. So that's why she didn't want me to go there. She said, I'm going to clean first, and then we talk about about your mess that you do all over. And yeah, you can tell, I was moving stuff here. So, <laughs> so me and my friend, we finally went to the cemetery. We jumped the wall and right away you feel something different. And I was like, it feels different this time. The area where we're jumping, it was the pet cemetery. And it was very dark in that area. And then in another area was the veterans and the light was there. And, and we we didn't do a praying. We, we didn't ask for permission. We just went for it. And, but we weren't disrespectful or anything, but it's good to say, hey, we just hear visiting, we don't want any problems, we just, we just being curious, whoever, I mean, with all respect, I mean, we're here for, you know, just walking by, I don't know, something, but no, we didn't do it. So we get inside and we walk around and then my friend and hey, do you have a weapon with you? And he's, I say, yes, I have, I have, I have this knife and I have this baton and I pass the baton to my friend and then he, okay, I feel better now. Uh, because it's, it's a, it's a lonely place. You can, you never know. I mean, in Mexico, we have a saying, don't be afraid of the ghost, be afraid of the living who are in abandoned places that can attack you. And then be afraid of that. And then we're like, yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. And that part, yeah, he's right about that. So we were walking, and finally there's a little path between the new part of the cemetery with the old part of the cemetery who goes to a wall, and the wall, they call it the Devil's Alley because a lot of people is being found dead there. So we got to the new part, and then we went, because we were to the old part, and then we going, we went to the new part, which is the mausoleum, not the one with the goat, don't worry about it. And we walk a little bit there, and we walk back to the old part of the cemetery. When we went there, we hear steps, like something running behind us, and then we turn, and nothing was there but it stops and then we feel like we've been observed. But I can tell my friend start like getting a little bit nervous and I say, okay, bro, 
it's time to bail. We have our experience. And I mean, we were drinking beer and I was like, let's get out. And that's what I have uh, for my experience. For the security guard, my friend, my friend told me, then the guy told him, then he has a, a motor home to sleep and make himself some coffee, food, watch TV. Because not all the time you've been pat patrolling the place by food. I mean, you get tired and bored and you don't want to know sometimes, you know. It can be sad too, especially in a cemetery. He go back and one night he says that the experience he has with the paranormal, with a ghost, that it was a bunch of kids playing soccer, but it was a it wasn't a ball, but it looks like they were playing soccer, and they only those ghosts can see the ball, can see the the la pelota, no, a ball, and they were playing and they were laughing, and the guy saw them. The guy saw them, and he opened the door, and he saw those kids, and it was really late. It was like three in the morning, and he's like, oh oh no, I'm not getting out. I'm not getting out, out of here. Uh, I, I, and he was observing by the window, but they noticed that he was looking at them and they disappeared. Some others, they knock at his door and they told him, and they told we're thirsty or we're hungry or we're, or I feel alone. And he, he when you see stuff like that, you freaked out. You don't know what to say. Maybe some other people who are used to it, they probably have a conversation with him, but they say they knock at his window when he falls asleep in a certain time of the of the of the grave sh shift that he was doing. He say it was very intense sometimes when people didn't visit in late hours, then those beings manifest uh, a certain hours in the nighttime, like nighttime and that very early, like three, four in the morning. He say it was very active place. And and I I don't know if he's still working doing that, but I think he he was planning to do it because it was it was getting too much for him. And he did kick a lot of people out. He didn't say specifically says how the witchcraft was being done, but a lot of he said that he saw like people dressed in black with uh, with the hoodies, you know, like like this, but more like the more a core for a cult. And he has to kick them out. He saw like people like doing witchcraft in big groups and doing rituals, and then he kicked them out. And but the most the most that he for him it was more crazy to see people. And they were around the cemetery talking to each other and sometimes talking to him or disappearing once they noticed that he saw them, they disappeared right in front of him. Very interesting. And for that, I did this painting called Las Cruces. And it, bring, it brings me, it's a different thoughts it's like Cruces, New Mexico, the cemeteries, and actually like the crosses from Deftones, from Chino Moreno. That's what it reminds me too. Hope you guys like it. It's actually one of my favorite paintings. And uh, I hope I sell it soon too. <laughs> I'm not gonna sell it cheap either. I'm going to sell it for $300. It takes me some time to paint it. I hope you guys have a good time. And this conversation was interesting for you and entertaining. I will say good night to you guys. And I'm going for the part in Spanish for those who speak Spanish only. And if you want to learn Spanish, well, don't leave me. It will be in Spanish very soon, in a few seconds. You guys have a great night, and thank you. My name is Antonio Valencia, and this was Valencia's Art. 
with paranormal grill for sure because it's coming it's coming urban exploration is coming all right thank you guys have a good night bye bye okay we'll hear uh en la parte de habla hispana en español para aquellos que hablan español aquí les tengo esta pintura que se llama las cruces yo vivo acá en Albuquerque, Nuevo México, y hay un lugar que se llama Las Cruces, a New Mexico o, ne o Nuevo México. Y, y es dedicado, cuando escucho yo el nombre de Las Cruces, Nuevo México, me llama mucho la atención eh, cómo se llama ese lugar y me, y me da esta imagen. Aparte de que me da esa imagen, cuando a mí me menciona Las, las Cruces, Nuevo México, hay un pequeño panteón aquí en Albuquerque, que se parece mucho a este, porque está pintado, dedicado a ese pequeño panteón, que está en, un, en una unidad de cruces, a lo que nosotros, le, a lo que se le llama aquí en Estados Unidos, freeways, o que sería musque, carreteras libres. Y cuando pinté eso, pues lo dediqué a ese panteón, la persona pensando que está sido abducida por, un, por una nave alienígena, lo que se le llama que ovni, ¿no? un objeto volador no identificado. Y hay que hablar la diferencia. Una cosa es ovni y una cosa es una nave extraterrestre o alienígena. Ovni quiere decir, como ya les dije, obje, objeto volador no identificado. Algo que ves en el cielo que no sabes qué es. Puede ser un globo, puede ser un satélite, puede ser una bolsa flotando en el aire, pero no es necesariamente una nave extraterrestre. Ya cuando la ves que está haciendo estas cosas, pues ya dices tú, puede que sea una nave extraterrestre o una nave del gobierno que está experimentando con la gente. ¿Quién sabe? Eh, aquí tenemos a la persona, pues, como contemplando, como en meditación, como en la manera que yo lo pinté, pues poco preocupado, qué es lo que va a pasar, ¿no? ¿Qué, qué es? Preguntándose quién es él, quién es el futuro, pues prácticamente podríamos decir que soy yo. Pero también a veces pienso que Chino Moreno de los Deftones. No lo dije eso en inglés, debería de haberlo hecho, pero más o menos esa es la idea, ¿no? No sé, eh, tiendo a pensar mucho, so, a pensarla mucho también cuando hago cosas. Lo haré, no lo haré y a veces eso me salva de muchos problemas y a veces me mete en problemas. También pensar mucho te puede meter en problemas porque no resuelve las cosas que debes de hacer en el momento. ¿Por qué el panteón y por qué esa persona está contemplando en el panteón y por qué la nave extraterrestre? Bueno, tuve algunas experiencias, uh, como comentaba hace un mo unos momentos en inglés. Tuve la experiencia de, estaba caminando con una amiga y mi amiga, y yo, vi bueno, yo vivía cerca de por ahí. Bueno, ella también, también. De hecho, creo que todavía vive, no sé dónde, creo que se mudó a Santa Fe. Y el caso fue que nosotros veníamos caminando y vimos un, una nave o algo que pareciera ser como una nave que no daba su... Ya ven que muchas naves son planitas y dan sus foquitos dan alrededor, ¿no? Este, como horizontal, ¿no? Horizontal. Esto fue lo que vimos como vertical, podríamos decirlo, ¿no? Que da, giraban las luces así. Pues eso fue lo que vimos. Vimos como un objeto en la copa de los árboles de ese cementerio. Como si se hubiera trepado algo a los árboles. Pero obviamente no, no estaba ni cerca de los árboles. Pero en nuestra perspectiva pareciera ser así. De repente salió así como, como un animal. Pero así, volando. Y se paró ahí. Y nosotros nos quedamos, ¿qué es eso? ¿A poco es un UFO, un, un, un ovni? Y no, nosotros, pues, ¿qué fregados es eso? Pues no sé. Y así quedó, 
así quedó esa parte, ¿no? Pero después vi otras luces. Eh, estuvo muy extraño esa noche. Y, y me fui pensando mucho en mi casa y probablemente ese soy yo. Pensando, ¿no? ¿Qué, qué es lo que yo vi? Total, uh, uh, estaba platicando con unos amigos en, mi, en el teléfono. Les dije lo que me pasó. No me creyeron. Dije, bueno, en fin. Entonces aquí, como puedes ver, sus pensamientos están siendo abducidos, secuestrados por la nave extraterrestre. Y puede ser que en cierta manera nosotros como sociedad, nuestros pensamientos, nuestras ideas, están siendo abducidas por lo que está pasando en, en, con nuestra atención, que es los medios sociales, la televisión, las noticias, eh, nuestro día a día, el estrés, la preocupación, puede abducirnos nuestros pensamientos y puede hacer que eso pierdamos el tiempo. O sea, yo tiendo a hacer eso mucho. Soy, soy muy procrastinador, no sé cómo decir la palabra correctamente. Eh, hay otra palabra que se llama procrastination, muy procrastinación, mucho que dejo las cosas para lo último, pues, como todo buen mexicano, ¿verdad? Y, pues, como les comentaba, ¿no? Eh, ¿Por qué el, el cementerio? Pues, pues, porque vimos esa experiencia, por la mentalidad que yo tenía en ese momento, lo que estaba pensando. Y, aparte, por, por, por lo que encierran los panteones, lo que es, y lo que hago yo, que es arte, eh, quiero hacer... Uh, investigación urbana para ver si tengo una experiencia paranormal y por eso se llama parrillada paranormal en, en español que es en inglés que es paranormal grill y va a ser igual va a ser en español en, en inglés y en español y aquí pues este como les comentaba pues en, el, en los panteones pues hay muchas muchas historias no muchos Muchos encuentros paranormales, muchos encuentros con brujería y pues también pues hay pues gente visitando pues y los recuerdos y pues es triste, es triste de, de eh, pues decir adiós a nuestros familiares y amigos, a nuestros conocidos y pues que no vamos a estar aquí por mucho tiempo, cualquier día nos vamos. Entonces, como les comentaba yo, pues, una amiga aquí en Albuquerque, pues, la historia que les comentaba en inglés, uh, bueno, tengo varios amigos, uno de mis amigos hace brujería, ¿no? Y él me contó, supuestamente que él hace brujería buena, supuestamente, vamos a suponer que es así. Y él me contó que había cosas que, increíbles, ¿no? Y entonces fueron al panteón a ver, a hacer sus, sus cosas y encontraron, pues, por ejemplo, fotografías, amarres que les dicen. Yo creo que ya han escuchado hablar de los amarres y, pues, yo estoy seguro. Y, pues, ustedes saben, los amarres son la fotografía de alguien con alfileres, pues amarrada con listón rojo, amarillo, o con, o con cuerda, con soga, y pues eh, azufre, tierra, no, mentira, porque ese es un panteón, ah, sal negra, todo, este, chiles, corta los chiles y meten a la persona ahí para perjudicarla, o las endulza con miel y arroz, y muchas cosas, usan muchas cosas para poder este, pues, atacar a la persona o, o controlarla o controlar su vida, ¿no? Y, pero ellos me contaron de una que, que me sorprendió bastante, que fue que ellos vieron, más bien, encontraron pantalones y camisas, ¿no? Amarradas de, a varios extremos, ¿no? Para como que para que no escapara algo que estaba adentro, pues, en efecto, tenían una gallina, la metían viva, con las fotografías de la persona, los calzones de la persona, la, la ropa interior, 
y amarraban el pantalón de cierta manera y lo pisoteaban hasta a matar al, al animal que estaba dentro de diciendo la encantación, ¿no? El, el, el embrujamiento, ¿no? Y yo me quedé, es increíble, dije yo, que la gente haga cosas así, dije yo, no podía creerlo. Pero me dijeron, sí, es un marranero ahí los panteones, me dijeron. Y, y bueno, pues también me enteré de otras cosas, como por ejemplo, eh, que hacen ritos satánicos, que ven fantasmas, los guardias de seguridad, ¿no? Ven fantasmas que han hablado con los fantasmas, ven gente también, por ejemplo, a, a la gente que, que va y los, los visita, pero ya son horas tardes, ¿no? Pero la hora que a lo mejor ellos pueden ir y los tienen que correr, pero lo más loco es, dicen, es la gente que hace brujería, ¿no? Que es totalmente una locura, dicen, eh, cultos de diferentes tipos que van tarde en la noche a hacer esas cosas, ¿no? Y por lo más curioso fue cuando un, un, un guardia de seguridad de un panteón vio unos niños jugar soccer, fútbol, y que estaban jugando, pero no veía la pelota, pero sí vio a los niños jugar y se le desaparecieron. Imagínense, a las 3 de la mañana, ¿no? ¿Qué hace un niño a esa hora? Y que vio, por ejemplo, gente que le tocaba la puerta de su... De su que le dicen motorhomes, no sé cómo se llaman ahorita en español, no me acuerdo, eh, de su casa móvil, de su casa móvil, y que le tocaban la puerta y la ventana donde se dormía y se asomaban y estaban esas entidades ahí viéndolo. Y pues una de las historias que me contaron de brujería que yo siempre me he quedado impresionado, ¿no? De, Muchas, debe haber peores, ¿no? Pero, pues, esta es la que yo me sé. Y dicen que, por ejemplo, bueno, lo que me contaron, ¿no? Que esta señora quería prosperar, ser, que su negocio saliera adelante, que su, que su pareja la, la amara más, ¿no? Y, y que, bueno, y pues ella estaba, pues, 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 loquemente enamorado de él en su desesperación hizo todo eso, aparte que ella quería que le fuera bien en la vida. Entonces ella, voy a poner los otros lentes, ella, pues nada, pues lo hizo. Eh, y van a preguntar, bueno, pero ¿qué hizo, no? <risa> pues ella se le ocurrió, más bien no se le ocurrió, ella, pre, bueno, se le ocurrió ir con ese brujo y le dijo que podía hacer, pero en su desesperación quiero algo realmente bueno, algo que con punch y le dijo que okay, vas a comprar una cabra un chivo y vas a hacer un collar con tus sueños con tus deseos y la fotografía de la persona que tú amas o que tú amas si no eres correspondida cuando llegues al panteón háblame y yo te voy a decir qué hacer y llévate un cuchillo un cuchillo grande de cocina el cuchillo en la brujería es la varita mágica, como la de Harry Potter. Y, y hagan de cuenta que esta señora fue y lo hizo. Y le habló a esta persona que le estaba ayudando. Y le dijo, que okay, vas a decir? Le dice, mira, ya lo tengo tongo. Tengo el chivo, tengo la cabra, dice. Como a ustedes les guste llamar. Lo tengo aquí listo. Está vivo. Lo voy a ya le puse el collar con todo lo que me dijiste. ¿Y qué tengo que hacer? Vas a decir esta encantación o este, o este, este oración de brujería, ¿no? Y lo hizo. La mujer lo hizo. Este, lo hizo. Agarra la cabra con el collar. Agarra el cuchillo. Le corta la garganta al animal. Y lo avienta dentro del mausoleo de ese panteón y lo cierra. Y ustedes saben que esos animales, los chivos, las cabras, son muy difíciles de matar. Eh, o sea, son, aguanta, pelean. O sea, esos animales pelean, o sea, no se dejan. Y, y el animal pues estaba defendiendo en su desesperación y su ira y su confusión. Pues imagínense la sangre de derramándose por todos lados. Pues él le decía, no te vayas y quédate ahí haciendo esa oración que te estoy diciendo. 
Y cuando a mí me contaron eso, yo me quedé, ay, pues dije, canijo, dije, esto sí está, está sabroso, dije yo, no, sí me, 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 me sacó de onda cuando lo escuché, dije, ah, canijo, dije yo, pero me imagino la desesperación y el amor que le tenía a ese hombre, a esa mujer, pues, yo creo que ha de haber sido muy, demasiado tóxico, ¿no? Ahora sí, como decimos, la tóxica, ¿no? Y ella, pues, lo está demostrando con, con ese tipo de, de cosas que ella estaba haciendo, ¿no? Pero, pues, sí, así es. Eh, y la pintura, pues, por eso la dediqué a todo eso. Obviamente no puse la cabra con la sangre, pero me hizo, o sea, todo eso pensar en todo eso. Y por eso hice esa pintura a la cual le llamo yo Las Cruces. Y también me recuerda al grupo de, de Chino Moreno, Deftones. No, bueno, no Deftones, The Crosses, que es una especie de God Techno Industrial Noise uh, llamada las The Crosses de Chino Moreno, el vocalista de, de Deftones. Y pues nada, pues ojalá que les haya gustado mi pintura y mi, y mi pequeño relato. Y pues voy a hacer un video muy pronto, voy a poner micrófono, voy a comprar micrófonos, todo eso para que mi voz se escuche más clara y, y pues nada, pues sigo aprendiendo de todo esto y pues este sería como creo mi cuarto video y bueno, espero que haya sido de su agrado y pues nos vemos pronto, buenas noches, hasta luego.